Well, I have to say uh, that I've always been uh, fascinated by the sound of poetry, by the sound of music. In my mind, uh, the best way to uh, to honor Keats on this occasion was to give uh, his uh, his poetry back its authentic voice. Anybody who's ever heard Bach's French Suites on the piano knows that that was intended to be played on the harpsichord. And anybody who attends this uh, virtual reading this evening will understand that to appreciate Keats, you need to hear it read as it was intended to be read, as Keats heard it in his mind as he was writing the poetry. So Keats wasn't really famous in his lifetime at all. What do you think he'd make of this virtual recreation 200 years later? <laughs> Yeah, you're absolutely right. He's somebody who very much wanted to be famous, so I'm convinced that were he uh, able to see uh, the events of, uh, of, of this week, and really this year, it's Keith year in a way, uh, he'd be thrilled, because this was a fellow who, uh, who courted fame, in fact, wrote a wonderful a poem on fame, and it was clear that was something that he aspired to, didn't achieve it, as you say, until after he had died, like so many great artists. So I think he would be absolutely thrilled. And I have to say, I think uh, it, it's also interesting. He was pilloried in his time for his voice. He was called a cockney poet. And that was really meant as a term of disparagement at the time. The reality is we're bringing back some of that original, authentic cockney accent to show how this poetry can really sing when it's read in the way that it's supposed to be read. So why is John Keats? I mean, he's having a bit of a sort of resurgence at the moment in popularity. His sort of European ideas, as you say, his voice. Why are people re-engaging so, so much? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's a function of the times, to be sure. Uh, Keats was also living during a time of pandemic. He himself died, as you say, of tuberculosis. He also probably had cholera. So uh, he was somebody who, whose family had, had, had suffered terribly uh, as a result of the, uh, the, the health conditions at the time. So I think people, people are, are looking at the romantics who, who frankly, that, that, that romantic tradition has always been bound up with a, a sense of death and foreboding. I think that's part of, the, part of the allure, part of the image. And certainly we're living at a time where, tragically, a death is very much with us. And so I think it's only natural to, to look back to times that have similar historical features, but that also that people found a way out of it. People found a way to heroicize that, that despair and present it in ways that ultimately provided a, a source of comfort for people. So I think those are probably a few of the reasons anyway.